your cognitive skills and cognitive operation. Language, anything else? Anything anybody wants to ask? No, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Actually, the recording uh, has started. That's why it is an information that the recording started. We didn't Achha, say anything. Achha. Achha. Yes, sir. Recording yeah. started, sir. Ah. Ha. Okay, sir. Recording started. Let me continue. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Ah. Language is also important for our perception. Perception is one of the most important cognitive process, and language is a very basic requirement. For our perception, assigning meaning, assigning uh, relationship—all those things are largely derived from our language structure. In a way, I want to say that language is the most important attribute, vehicle, system to help our cognitive processes develop and grow, and to be useful. Now, coming to the next thing that I want to tell you about is structure of the language. <coughs> about structure of the language we have uh, first part of the language structure is phonemes phonemes is the smallest unit of sound meaningfully produced to use language means every language has its selected and definite phonemes you say english has its own phonemes Hindi has its own phonemes. Odia has its own phonemes. Phonemes are the sound systems of the language, sound units of the language, smallest sound unit of the of a language. That is meaningful. That can be meaningfully conveyed. Meaningful means you cannot just um, uh, monosyllabic, monophonic. You cannot just get a total meaning of that. But that has some connotation about the um, um, about carrying the meaning to the person. So the phonemes are the basic, fundamental, first aspect of the structure of the language, and then called um, morphemes. As I have told you, phonemes by itself is not sufficient to carry any meaning. Supposing ma is a phoneme, t is a phoneme, p is a phoneme, but when I say this, you are not able to uh, take any meaning out of that. It's a sound. But when these phonemes combine to communicate a basic meaningful unit, and that is called morpheme, means morphemes are the smallest meaningful unit of a language. Phonemes are the smallest sound unit of a language, and and then syntax. Syntax means. System that rules on how words can be meaningfully arranged. From now, you have morphemes. Morphemes are meaningful, smallest unit, but morphemes do not convey the whole meaning, the related meaning. Supposing I say mother, you do not get the whole sense why I am saying the word mother, unless I say you something more than that about the mother. Therefore, syntax is the A rule of the language, and those are helpful for creating a meaningful communication to anybody. That is, we have phonemes as the smallest unit of sound. We have morphemes as the smallest meaningful unit. Morphemes are a combination of phonemes, and syntax is the combination of morphemes. Where we get the meaning as it is required, or the wholeness of the meaning. Morphemes are meaningful, but they are not communicative. Total uh, uh, in, in, intention is communi not communicated by morpheme, but intention is communicated by the uh, syntax. Now, this is all about the structure of the language, and next is about language acquisition. <laughs> you know. when a child is born he has not acquired the language he is to grow up acquiring language at different stages as the child is growing up he shows the phenomenon of acquisition of language through his developmental processes 
what are those processes stages of language development one queen queen as you as you as you see during infant infancy or then the early um, after some 2 3 months uh, uh, during birth the child makes a sound a continuous sound infants oral expression that explores the production of vowel sounds you will you will see that uh, uh this child is making some kind of sound which is not anyway largely meaningful but it is a sound it is a beginning that the child is trying to inculcate language into his system and those sounds are largely vowel related sounds vowel sounds the child produces and which we call the queen queen sound when the child is playing he, the child is producing some kind of sound and that is the beginning of his language and some psychologists also believe that he, earlier to queen there is also another stage of uh, sound production towards the development of language and that is crying crying is the beginning of language and the child as soon as the child is born it starts crying to show that he or she has the inbuilt capacity to learn language crying then queuing and then babbling <clears throat> after some time after some months three four months you will find that the child is not making the same sound as it was being done earlier earlier sounds were distinctly vowel sounds but now the child is also using some other form of sounds which we can call the consonant sounds of the consonant as well as vowels now the child comes to know that a sound language sound can be produced not only by vowels but by using both consonants and vowels now now the child will produce sounds which comprise both consonants and vowels but not not at meaningful this uh, babbling sounds are not <coughs> uh, not meaningful as the language communication but it is also in some way it is meaningful to mother because mother understands from the babbling sound the communication between the child and the mother largely during the stage the mother mother understands the babbling sound therefore in babbling babbling time the child there is also some basic communication between the child and the mother although nobody else other people non unrelated people cannot understand the meaning but the child the mother can understand some to some extent and after then after that some time after that there will be one word utterances baba mama tata like that one word utterances and <clears throat> the child is now able to combine consonant vowel and combining them begins to convey some meaningful one word that is the next stage of development and we call it one word utterance stage crying queuing babbling and then one word utterance stage and then <clears throat> gradually the child comes to combine words one word to two words and then next stage is called two word utterance stage or telegraphic phase you know nowadays telegraph is not telegram is not uh, very common use in very common use but you must be knowing that people are writing messages telegraphically d t h e they are writing as a d d means t h e it is in the place where it, you find you can get meaning that is what is a telegram and now during two word occurrences the child child can meaningfully express many things by just uttering two words kono how can uh, two words meow meow means they have certain references about a cat like that whatever like that and then <clears throat> finally the last phase is the basic adult sentence structure from two word then comes three word uh, um, uh, um, on structured sentences and in the process finally the child the child goes to the 
final phase of the language development that is basic adult sentence structure now the child says full sentences to communicate his or her experiences feelings and all that these are the stages of a language acquisition is it clear and audible niki sahu yes sir now now we, we have discussed about the stages of language acquisition and then the uh, next thing that we have to discuss about uh, theories of language this is another very important and a controversial issue in the literature of cognitive development people very very great people in psychology they say their own different opinion about the theories of language development and one of the most important group of theorist among them is behaviorist i have already uh, told you one thing that psychology is never never ever all definite you cannot say that this is only right and the other thing is wrong in be in the natural sciences you say the earth is moving around the sun that is the only truth but in behavioral sciences and particularly in psychology you just cannot say that uh, this is the only truth because psychology is dealing with human beings and human being as you, as you know is a very very complex system even more complex than the universe that is why psychology always shows you different perspectives of the same thing the theorists they say this is right someone says this is this is right but you just cannot say that someone is wrong and someone is right they criticize each other's point of view like that similarly also language development uh, has its own theories and one of the basic language development theory was proposed by the behaviorists and their in emphasis is on a reinforcement children imitate adults they how do how children learn language what do what do the behaviorists say and behaviorists is largely uh, the leadership goes to uh, skinner we have skinner skinner is the pioneer and the leader of the team behaviorists and how do, what how do they perceive the language development of children human beings they say that children imitate adults how do we learn language we try to imitate what the adult is saying that is our innate quality native quality to imitate people that is a uh, characteristics being endowed with the child and when the child imitates and gives out a correct response he or she is reinforced the father says yes this is good the mother says appreciates the mother smiles whatever kind of reinforcement it is the child being provided with that reinforcement reward learns the correct thing <laughs> and when he or she is disapproved of his supposing see he or she is saying a word and it's wrongly spelled it's wrongly pronounced the mother says no then the child gets uh, gets a, like a punishment and then he or she tries to change the uh, pronunciation of the word that is the way that children learn language and continue to learn language gradually by the process of reinforcement and therefore this approach of learning language is a mechanistic point of view we imitate we see others we get when we get reinforcement or reward we learn it we acquire it when we get punishment we forget it we change it that is the kind of thing skinner behave this and then chomsky another very great contribution to understanding the development of <coughs> human language development chomsky says that a human child is born with a mechanism lad language acquisition device ame janma hala bele amku gote mechanism you may consider it as a software you may consider it as a hardware whatever it is 
you are being born with a kind of system that is facilitative to your language development and he called it language acquisition device and that is very typical of the human child prati manusya pila janma hala bele ut system meikir achi chi so that he will he or she will utilize that system to learn that language and he has also his arguments he has also his proof about how a human can madam how are you here anyway uh, now nikki madam now yes sir now what one of my student from revenue university see there she must not be anyway anyway i am continuing and not uh, some sound is there Do you able to learn? The network is too slow. Ah, sir. Okay. Now, uh, next is uh, I have told you about Chomsky. Is it clear, Chomsky? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Chomsky. Yes, sir. Theory of grammar. Huh. Most important contribution is language acquisition device. Lab. That. Yes. The human, the human child is born with a specific mechanism. A specific kind of uh, system. Some you may call it software, you may call it hardware, whatever you may call it. And now the next is cognitive theory, the most popular theory of language development by Piaget. Jean Piaget. Jean Piaget has developed uh, another aspect, and language is just one aspect of child's overall intellectual development. Yeah, this says that language development is not independent of the child's other development. The child's language development is related to all other parts of the cognitive development. That means it is a part of the system, and like other development, some sound is there. Now, sir, uh, kindly request all of them to mute themselves. Acha. Uh, uh, now, it's a request to all of all my students that some sound is there. Maybe you will not be able to hear me. That sound continues. You you try to mute yourself uh, so that you listen me. And whenever I will ask you some question, you again put your uh, sound system on and talk to me. Let me continue saying things. <laughs> now uh, cognitive um, uh, theory which is being largely uh, uh, headed by jean piaget language is just one aspect of child's overall intellectual development he doesn't see language as a separate system in any child he says that the child is not only developing language as a system he is developing his whole cognitive aspect and language is a contributory system to that cognitive development that is what is cognitive theory of language development and finally another important theory by bruner bruner theory is called the interaction theory and the theory emphasizes that <coughs> language development is a process of interaction between human child and his fellows all around him or her unless there is good deal of interaction unless there is appropriate interaction among the people language development will not be efficient interaction is the primary concern of language development if the parents if the mother does not talk to the child enough the child will not grow up with good language system if the uh, peers in the school do not interact with the child with much of language use then language development will be hamper interaction is the main important and a basic requirement for language development we we saw in this theory we saw that is no contradiction reinforcement is necessary unless you get something you will not 
learn learn that that is a very fundamental principle of life reinforcement is required some innate mechanism is there which is only absolutely available to the human beings not to other animals and therefore human beings uh, are able to learn so quickly and so better and there is language is not independent of other cognitive development language is a part of the cognitive development and the child's language development goes with other cognitive development if other cognitive developments are weak then language development will also be affected and then interaction social all these things point to different aspects of language development by in terms of theory that is what is uh, theories of language development any question now you can ask me any question about these theories of language development because this is an important part of your syllabus you have to write an some an answer on this part what are the different theories of language development and uh, there are also criticisms there are also different uh, uh, things that you have to read this i will to tell you the basic things anybody having any question <coughs> sir uh, uh, kindly uh, repeat uh, uh, jam piaget's uh, theory of uh, language uh, acquisition uh, jam piaget could not get that acha piaget theory of about language develop piaget is basically interested in the uh, intellectual development of children he has a very great contribution a great theory theory of uh, cognitive development and in that 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 i will tell you in the next part today but basically about uh, language development he pointed out that language development is not an independent development of the human child if human child supposing someone wants to grow up only in language it is not possible other development supposing reasoning mathematical skill other kinds of things they go together with language development language development is just a kind of kind uh, of associated growth with other kind of development cognitive when we think of cognitive development we are we have other kind of things also there are developments which are non verbal also but language is not an independent a child without having appropriate cognitive development in other fields cannot have cognitive development like that that is what is there now anything else <laughs> now next is all those things are uh, uh, di uh, discussed detail um, now now comes the cognitive theory of language development as you have asked is about um, piaget's theory of cognitive development jean piaget's theory of cognitive development piaget says that cognitive development is a uh, passes through four stages it passes through four stages of development one sensory motor these are related to the language development also sensory motor pre operational concrete operational and formal operational now <clears throat> the sensory motor period which is approximately during the period from birth to 2 years janmaru 2 years porjonto ei period of development ko kwa jay sensory motor development jo the period during which there is language development and alongside that there is also total cognitive development system it is a package not that only there will be language development it is also a supportive system for cognitive development and that in this stage a child has a relatively little competence in representing the environment using in images languages and symbols <clears throat> now the child is during this stage sensory motor that is from 0 to 2 years the child cannot express himself or herself by images languages or symbols the child has not yet acquired those efficiencies to represent whenever an adult is adult wants to communicate you something he is using language and he is saying the child cannot use the language and therefore during this stage the child's 
way of communication is by using sensory motor behavior the child communicates by crying the child communicates by smiling the child communicates by uh, uh, other forms of body behavior sensory motor this is the way the child communicates and this is the way the child gains his experience and formalizes his experience if the child wants to attract the mother what he what he or she is doing he is doing some kind of sensory motor behavior and that is what is the first stage that is according to uh, piaget the first stage of development is sensory motor and during this stage the child learns to coordinate and use his sense and motor organs akhi nako kanam hato godo sabu byabhar kari ki the child is learning Uh, the uh, enjoying the experiences that is that is sensory motor period and now the next is pre operational period 2 to 7 years the most important development of this time is language now this is the time when the child from sensory motor comes to focus on the language now by by this time <coughs> he or she has some language acquisition some language skill in order to express itself but the language skill is not enough not adequate to express his or her experiences completely to communicate his or her experiences completely language i use kariba arambha kare kintu tar language experience ette asinu thai language sufficiency ette asinu thai je se ta ko totally express kari pari but the child tries his or her best to to bring out language use into his experiences and that is why it is called pre operational because the, it is the uh, it is a uh, trying time it is a testing time for the child to communicate himself through language the child is not completely efficient and therefore reluctantly so to say the child is using and that is why the we call it pre operational before the war ba before the actual operation <laughs> and that continues 2 to 7 years and this is actually in fact a big period for the development of the child not only for the cognitive development but also for the language development because the child tries to use and during the every developmental psychologist or any developmental science they say that this is the most vital period of life satto varsha the first 7 years of life is much more important for any kind of development hamu ko anek samare amar student mane pochanti je sir hame tike bahare roichu phulwani re roichu mu babu ji 7 8 varsha hoi gele mu pilang ko leiki mu bhuvaneshwar katak dai bhalo school le pat pade amar advice hala jaha koribar achi prathom 7 varsha re pila ko joga kan that is the most important and vital period to experience life therefore stimulation whatever is required must be provided to the child before 7 years almost 7 years first 7 years of life is large, largely important for future development ame believe karuchu je prathama 7 varsha re jaha ghatana ghatitibo jivan sara ta dhoi sukhi khaiba avastha ase that is what is the importance of pre operational period you know what is pre operational आम जो गोटे वार कथा भाविबू प्री अपरेसन युद्ध हवा पूर्व आम के साज सजा करिपेयर करा इम्पोर्टाट थे युद्ध आरंभ हो गले आ जीवन टाइम जब गोटे युद्ध बिल ग्रहण कर इफ यू वांस द वार बिगेन्स आउ अपरेसन जहाँ प्रिपेरेसन जहाँ है दैट इज इम्पोर्टाट दैट इज व्हाट इज प्री अपरेसन देन सेभेन टू टुवेल्व इयर्स अनादर वेरी इम्पोर्टाट पीरियड एंड इट इज कल्ड कंक्रीट अपरेसनाल पीरियड what is concrete operational during this stage it is called concrete if i know that 5 into 2 is 10 i am taught i have learned 5 into 2 is equal to 10 and someone will ask me what is 2 into 5 i will not be able to tell that because my experiences are concrete or my cognitive development are concrete to my relevant experiences i cannot as a flexibly change my experiences do you get my point i hope you get my point the experiences or the learning or the development 
that is used as it is learned, as it happened, and at, at, as it is realized. There is not much of innovation, change, creativity in that. And that phase of, <coughs> we, we know that stage of life from 7 to um, 12 years, from up to class 5, 6, if we are to write one essay, we remember that and produce it exactly. That is the com concrete operation. We cannot change ourselves to accommodate. That is a period of com concrete operation. And concrete operation prepares or creates the foundation for the subsequent development. If you do not have strong concrete operation, you do not have strong and then comes formal operation. It starts uh, raining heavily. Anyway. <laughs> Am I audible now? Jyoti. Yes, sir, you are audible. audible. Yes, sir, you are audible. That's anyway. Nikki, am I audible? Yes, sir, you are audible. <laughs> sir, I got a doubt. Uh, like, uh, sir, uh, what is the what is the role of now, recent and now, Let me tell you the uh, formal operational period. Formal operational period. And now, this is the final goal in the development of a cognitive process. <laughs> it is called formal operation because now whatever you have acquired across all these three periods of your development, you have to use them independently of other things means whatever you know whatever you have learned whatever you have acquired will now only form the basis of your knowledge and using that you will be able to extend your knowledge on your own you will be able to learn things more and more by just manipulating by just organizing by reorganizing your knowledge into different formats and that is formal and that continues all across the life whatever you have acquired whatever you have it's not that you do not learn things during uh, formal operation and after afterwards but formal operation part is that you reuse recreate reinvest whatever you have learned already that is the basis and the fundamental and you grow up exercising your knowledge to regain reproduce knowledge the basic or in other words i can say that up to the concrete operational period you gather the basic fundamental requirements input system largely largely you have acquired the input system for your subsequent development and once you reach the formal operational period you try to reuse, recreate by using those inputs in different ways. Formal operation present, I mean, you can use the same thing. You can use the same thing. You can use the same thing. You can use different things. And with this, I, I completed the yeah, essay. And then, next thing that I am to, this, is, this part is over. And next thing that I have to tell you uh, about the functions of the language, 
because you are learning the language development functions of the language <coughs> there are different kinds of specific specific functions that you do you carry out by using a language one is called the speech act <coughs> you are able to convince others you are able to impress others you are able to do good in your interview in many ways you impact other people and that is by using your language in a specific format we call it the speech act tame kemiti katha kahucho katha kahi janile sundara ei jo fact that is what is called the speech act and language one of the important function of the language is speech act you know some people say and they are appreciated by what they speak some people say and they are not accepted or appreciated they are avoided like that kichu logon ko suniya ko bhal lage kichu logon ko suniya ko boring lage birakta lage jo dre am ta koi that is the kind of thing function of the language and speech act do din stay me jani and second is propositional <coughs> propositional content on now <coughs> speech act is a very sim simple so to say i don't say just it is simple but it is it is one kind of act but when a scientist is speaking when someone is speaking which requires language logic observation derivation some propositional concept scientific teaching scientific speaking or speaking with some kind of creativeness those are also suppose in, in those cases a small mistake in the use of language is also is also some kind of error propositional content duty or care that is a different kinds of language use a science teacher using very very selected but small language system a history teacher is using a very elaborate language system and if a science teacher teaches like a history teacher then it will be boring and if a history teacher teaches like a science teacher physics teacher it will also be boring and that is called the propositional content and that is being determined by the language and then another important thing is thematic structure thematic structure means sometimes you say and use language in one very simple way but it it conveys a very deeper meaning bare bare ame gote katha jaha kahu tar bahut antarnihit artha ebong communication thai that is thematic जोटा the experience le kuch nijaro that is a thematic presentation it is language is not important important is the content the thema being presented by the language samaste kavita lekhi paribe ni samaste gopo lekhi paribe ni ta ki tumi kichu gopo dekhibo you appreciate it not because of the language because the language communicate and is not in our mind so these are the three important functions of the language one <coughs> speech act second one is propositional content you like the scientific and and third one is artistic and content these are the kinds of thing go on then mo language structure mo jinsa koi dei ji phonemes and morphemes 
आगर बर्तमान मुझे कहूँ हायर लेवल अफ लिंगुईस्टिक एनालीसीस् आम फोनिम्स एंड फोनिम्स एंड मर्फिन्स आर भेरी बेसिक फंडामेटाल आसपेक्ट अफ द लांगुएज स्ट्रक्चर बट बियड दैट आम जो आउरी लांगुएज को एनालीसीस् कर तार आहरी केत लेवल्स अच्छी देर आर सम अदर लेवल्स अफ लांगुएज कंटेक्ट दो जार लेक्सिकल कंटेन्ट अफ द लांगुएज दो जार सिंटाक्टिक कंटेन्ट अफ द लांगुएज दो जार सेमांटिक और मिनिंग कंटेन्ट अफ द लांगुएज लेक्सिकल कंटेन्ट When you are communicating a language, what are the kinds of words that you are using? Which word is more appropriate? If you find that you can have a better substitute word, you are improving lexically. Lexical improvement means you are using a word. You feel that this word is not sufficient. You you want to choose a better word for this expression. Then you find the thesaurus. To find the equivalent words for that, synonym words for that, and then you choose a better one. Means you are improving lexically. Lexical content means your word choice, your choice word choice, and placement of the choice one. What better choice of words you do have for a particular expression? Sometimes you will find that two people are expressing the same thing, but someone is someone's Uh, expression is more powerful, is more meaningful, is more conveying than other one. The kind of thing these people are doing, John, the kind of thing they are doing, they are doing good things. Other people are doing good things. Some people are doing good things. Because there is lexical difference. Someone is having better lexical approach than other one. That is what is lexical content. And then syntactic content of the language, the grammar. What should come where? The use of words in its appropriate place. Same sentence can be written in many different ways, but one of them will be more powerful expression than the other because depending on its syntactic content, how they are reported, and what is their place of placement as it is. And then finally, semantic content. You are saying you are you have good uh, lexical content, you have good syntactic content, but even then your expression is not powerful. Your expression is not that meaningfully attractive, and that is that part is called the semantic content or meaningfulness. If you are if you make all these three things good. Then you will have a better language expression or control. Semantic, grammatical way, what are they? Syntactic, what are they? The proper use of words and language, what are they? And finally, they must convey the meaning appropriately. <coughs> With this, this part of the thing is covered. Now. Uh, the next important thing is <coughs> multilingualism bilingualism I, i i should rather say and cognition what is uh, usually in the present scenario during the present time we are supposed rather we have by the exigencies of the life and environment we are supposed to be multilingual no more a single language is our life's process and goal if we we remember we do not know any other we didn't know any other language even if we were 12 years old shastra shani padhiba parjanto ame second language kis jan nathu only odia odia and odia nothing else shastra shani beluku a b c d padikiri english language jan Then that is what is. But nowadays, whatever 
child or person you meet, wherever, in any part of the world, you will find that at least he, is multi, he or she is multilingual, knowing many more languages. And in the Indian context, particularly in English, Hindi and mother tongue is a very common thing with everybody. And what is that? Very, um, this has become a hot topic since long time. What is the bilingualism and cognition, multilingualism and cognition, how they are related? Is multilingualism, bilingualism advantageous for cognitive development or they are disadvantages? How do researchers say about bilingualism and multilingualism? Now, <coughs> In fact, in the literature, there is no concrete suggestion or concrete idea or one idea that bilingualism, suppose you let us suppose bilingualism, bilingualism is something better than multilingualism. Many researchers have shown that bilingualism is actually something good, but giving or on, but under certain conditions of expression and not. As it is, bilingualism is not all a good phenomenon. And in that reference, they have classified bilingualism as additive bilingualism, subtractive bilingualism, compound bilingualism, coordinate bilingualism. Now, additive bilingualism is a fact of bilingualism, just I am giving you some simple idea. <laughs> when the two languages being learned by a child is complementary to each other, one language is friendly to the other language. Do you get my point? But subtractive bilingualism is a form of bilingualism which is a condition in which one language interferes the efficiency of the other language. Now, now the question is, if they, these are two kinds of language, additive and subtractive bilingualism, then there must be conditions when the child will be able to develop additive bilingualism and there must be conditions when the child will develop subtractive bilingualism. There are many such conditions, but for example, if someone is to be bilingual, it should be, he, he or she should be bilingual as soon as possible. Means, the earlier you learn to be bilingual, the better it will be an additive bilingualism. Naturally, it will be a kind of subtractive bilingualism. Because the developmental psychologists, they, they pointed out that once one language has taken off a stand, one language has been established completely or thoroughly, if you begin to learn another language, the second language will have a press down effect the second language will be will be uh, uh, a sub subtractive language. And therefore, early learning of both languages is, is, is a condition, is a necessary condition to become bilingualism, to become a uh, become an additive bilingualism. Similarly, other conditions are there, prestige of the language, second language, first language. Supposing you are your mother tongue is Uriya, and you are learning English as a second language. And now you, you think of two, two children, one remaining in village and other remaining in Bhubaneswar. In Bhubaneswar, the child learns that English language is socially respected and that is a, in the family, in, see, here she learns that English language is a respected language and therefore that social respect of the second language will help him or her to be more proud of learning the second language. While in the village, the child learns 
second language only in school and he or she doesn't have any scope to use that language anywhere because that is not socially respected socially approved therefore in these two conditions one may develop additive language for bilingualism and other may develop subtractive bilingualism mother's language because the child has the largest source of learning language mother if mother is not bilingual the child will have a sense of rejectedness about the second language there are research have shown that there are many such conditions which influence the bilingualism but the next thing is multilingualism now the question is no more bilingualism because anybody nowadays with the exigencies of the conditions of life need to be multilingual you will find that many people know no at least three languages because of their basic required english language hindi hindi is nowadays a very important language for everybody because cinema uh, and uh, entertainment everything goes by by that language therefore but the issues about bilingualism and multilingualism are similar but we are because in india we have so many languages and now due to the modern uh, requirements we are um, uh, almost um, almost one nation and one system therefore multilingualism is a bigger issue in the indian context and how to handle multilingualism there is one uh, part in multilingualism in india and then some aspect in know about the school the third language policy or all those things you will have to know uh multilingualism and multilingualism and thinking some uh, something has been discussed and you uh, you know that whether you have a additive system of languages same thing can be applied to multilingualism one language one language two language three they are facilitated to each other they are going together with each other they have a common program with each other and other side all these languages they have different forms of operation they are independent operations then one is advantages the other one is disadvantages these kinds of things uh, suggest that language there are a lot of things being discussed second language acquisition second language importance of second language uh, those kind of things uh, natural mechanism and single dual system hypothesis and all that with this i i completed the um, multilingualism issue and in indian context you will have to read all those things and then language and speech it deserves it is a first to some uh, some part of the people who have some kind of deserves with respect language system <coughs> language deserves aphasia even you can all or uh, study there is nothing very difficult you can learn about what is aphasia how uh, aphasia happens what are the symptoms how they affect the eye, learning disabilities autism these are some kinds of disorders being explained which relate to the language all all are not only language related disorders <laughs> they are also language uh, some language uh, behavior symptoms are there but they are not only language supposing alzheimer's is not only language disorder a language impairment phonology dyspraxia all those things you can read and learn without any support i think without any you don't require to um, get any help of that with this kind of um, system this kind of explanation i completed this third unit this book and now it is to you manjula do you have anything to ask me manjula mohanty manjula do you listen to me yes i listen to you are you do you have anything to ask me manjula no sir nothing to about this language that i have explained you know it's only counseling class i have to explain in uh, summary i cannot go details about everything 
it is actually required that you should have to prepare first and then ask me questions about it. But anyway, right, I, have, right. I have almost covered all the important issues relating to language development. Right. And then uh, Niki Sau, do you want any clarification? Uh, good morning, no. sir. Anybody else? Those who are listening to me, anybody else? Sir, am I audible? Sumitra Dawai. Hello? No question, no clarification. Then I, I think I have to close. Thank you all for accommodating, listening to me in this class. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, hello, sir. And uh, let me close if you don't have anything to share with me. Hello, hello, hello sir. Thank you, sir, for presentation. Hello. Uh, anybody, anything to share with me?